Today I want to talk about one of my favorite video accessories, the video monopod. Now video monopods have a few features that differentiate them from traditional photography monopods. Today I'll be using the Manfrotto 561 HD V1 and I'll show you why it's one of the most versatile pieces of gear that I own. So if I can only take one piece of camera support gear, uh, if I have to choose between my monopod and tripod, I'm definitely taking my monopod. So why would you use a monopod for video? Well, if you spent any time shooting video, you know that handheld footage is just not gonna work. The amount of camera shake you get from just trying to hold the camera still is enough to make anyone dizzy and that doesn't even take into account trying to do pans and tilts. Now, the support equipment piece that's used most often is a tripod. And a tripod offers great stability and a really nice fluid head will let you get those nice panning and tilting shots. However, you're a little bit limited when it comes to adding just enough camera movement. This is where a video monopod comes to the rescue. While it can't rival a good tripod as far as sheer stability goes, the versatility and the variety of shots that it offers make it an absolute must in my opinion. Now let's spend a little bit of time looking at the features that make video monopods unique and then we'll also look at the types of shots that you can achieve using it. The first feature that I love about this monopod is the feet. The three feet snap out and add the type of stability needed for video. In addition to the inherent stabilization that they offer, I usually step on one of them to ensure that there is no movement, especially if I'm going to shift the monopod. The feet are attached to the monopod with a ball joint, which lets me smoothly shift the monopod. And then of course, the range of the shift is dictated by the length of the monopod. Next, we'll see the fluid drag system, which helps you get really smooth pans when using the video monopod. Now again, if you compare them to a solid tripod with a nice fluid head, you'll notice that they're not as stable or smooth, but there are times when I wanna add a little bit of camera movement, and this is certainly way better than hand holding a camera and trying to pan. Next, we have the four sections that let me extend the monopod all the way to six feet, five inches. The range is not only there to accommodate people of different heights, but also to allow you to quickly change perspectives and get a variety of shots. And finally, we have the fluid head, which is an absolute must for the types of shots that I'm gonna show you in the next portion of this video. Now, this is not a very big fluid head, but it still does the job quite well. The arm can attach on both sides, and there are times where I don't even use the arm, and I just guide the head using the camera itself. The fluid head also has a quick release plate, so I can seamlessly go from my monopod to my tripod. Next, let's look at the types of shots that you can get by using a video monopod. First, let's look at the reveal. Now, a reveal is a type of shot where the main subject of your shot is hidden to start, and then it's brought into view by some type of camera movement. Now, there are three different types of reveal shots that I like to do using the video monopod. The first reveal shot uses a shift of the monopod. I stand to the side and step on one of the monopod feet. I start with my subject completely hidden, and then I shift the monopod to the side and then bring the subject into view. It's pretty simple to accomplish and the result is what's referred to as a Dutch angle or a Dutch tilt, which is where the vertical lines are at an angle to the sides of the frame. The next type of reveal shot is a simple pan. Again, we start with the subject hidden and then slowly pan the monopod to reveal the subject. While this can be accomplished with a tripod, there are situations where space is a bit tight or where I don't have enough time to properly set up a tripod. And that's where I'd prefer to use a monopod. The third reveal shot is probably my favorite. It's a variation of the first one, but you'll notice that I mounted the camera sideways. And this allows me to maintain the camera's horizontal orientation while I'm shifting the monopod. This shot will take some practice, but I think you'll be really happy with the results once you get it right. The next type of shot I want to talk about is called a zoom in. I start out with the camera shifted towards the subject and this is where I acquire focus. I then start my shot and slowly pull the monopod back, losing focus of the subject. I'll then later reverse this in post so that I can get a perfect zoom in. You can also try to start back here and then slowly move towards your subject, but it's a lot harder to nail that focus that way. The next type of shot I want to discuss is a stabilized shot. Now this by no means will replace an actual stabilizer for your camera, but it will give you usable results if you're in a bind. Simply grip the monopod below the camera with minimal pressure 
and then walk with as little bouncing movement as possible. Again, it's never going to replace a professional stabilizer and you will also get tired very quickly, but it is an option that you should be aware of. The next type of shot I wanna talk about is the rock and pan, which really gives you a tracking shot. So you'll grab the arm and the strap of the monopod, then shift it forward, and then slowly move it around in an arc and follow your subject. You can also use this type of grip for the zoom in shot that we discussed earlier. The next type of shot I wanna go over is a down angle shot. Now this isn't one that I use very often, but it does produce some pretty neat results, so I wanted to mention it. You're gonna start out by extending the monopod and then locking it into place. You're then going to tilt the head and lock it in place and set your focus. Now setting focus may be a little tricky because you don't know your final distance from the subject, but just estimate it to the best of your ability. You'll then take the monopod and stabilize it right on your thigh, holding it with your hands this way. You can now use a variation of the rock and pan to get a really nice down angle tracking shot. In this section, I just wanted to go over some general notes about using a video monopod. As with any camera support system, the more points of contact you have with the camera, the more stable your shot will be. With a monopod, we can tuck the arm in our armpit, use both our hands, and you can even get a viewer for your camera to get five points of contact, including the monopod leg itself. If I'm really careful, I can get the monopod to balance and stand still on its own. Do I ever do this? Never, but I wouldn't recommend it. The video monopod is definitely one of my favorite camera supports. It's easy to use, it lets me get a variety of shots, and it's quite portable. I use the Manfrotto 561 BHDV for this video and I love it, and I'll put links in the description to this model as well as some other models that I think you should explore. Please let me know if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for other types of shots that can be achieved using a video monopod. If this video was helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. We also started a Twitter account, which is at TechGearTalk. Thanks for watching and check out some of our other videos.